Hello, and welcome to our 13th conversation to connect. Let's get real talk powered by Exceptional Connections. I'm Chuck Oxford, Exceptional Connections business consultant and member of the leadership team. At Exceptional Connections, we offer intentional and innovative solutions to boost your business. Each week, we nominate a different member of our Exceptional Connections community to have a meaningful conversation. Uh, so be sure you make yourself comfortable with a beverage of your choice. Take notes, add comments and questions in the chat box to engage us during our conversation. Around 45 minute mark or one hour mark, I'll unmute the lines and invite our listeners to ask questions, share their ahas, epiphanies, and enter into our thought-provoking conversation. The inspiration of our weekly conversations is to, to connect, let's get real talks, is to create purposeful conversations. We desire to be relevant during these challenging and uncertain times, to support our community to make an impact in the world and stay connected. So as we get started, I invite you to set aside distractions and invest your attention into the conversation that is about to unfold. Look for one idea you can take away that can, you can put into action so you don't cheat yourself out of the time you've invested here. So our conversation this week is with Sydney O'Neill Dady, founder and chief connector of Exceptional Connections. Before I bring Cindy on with us, it's my pleasure to share some background about Cindy and her journey. Cindy has over 14 years experience as a business relationship marketing strategist. She founded Exceptional Connections Networking August of 2009 out of a deep burning desire to fulfill her I am statement. I am an exceptional connector. This led to her to be a ex chief exceptional connector and teach hundreds of business owners to do the same. At the, at the core of her inquisitive style is the art of cultivating and cherishing genuine business connections. Exceptional Connections provides a nurturing relationship-based environment where business professionals turn contacts into powerful advocates and raving fans while increasing their revenue. Sydney is firstly committed to guiding business professionals to achieve lifelong business success. She is also a contributing author in an audio compilation on women of influence. So Cindy is an avid gardener, gardener who is passionate about organic vegetable gardening, gardening. Her topic today, networking lessons gleaned from my garden, six seasons for abundant gardening and building relationships. So here's a picture of Sydney's garden this year. Uh, because a picture is worth a thousand words, we wanted to show everybody the picture of her garden so they could relate to the presentation today. So Sydney, tell me about how gardening and networking are related. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for having me. It's fun to be on the other side of the cup here. <laughs> yeah, um, it's bad. So, <laughs> I'm going to switch over here to a different slide. Um, so two of my passions and favorite activities are organic gardening um, and relationship building. So as I participate in both of these activities, I frequently have these epiphanies, these flashes of insight where I realize how very similar they are. So what I've determined is gardening is really a lot more like networking than you might think at first glance. So accomplishing each step in the process moves us closer to mastery and reaping the fruits of a bountiful harvest. So in gardening as with networking, the act of sowing seeds, nurturing, watering them, places the vision of the harvest in full motion. So it's also important to build critical skill sets that we'll be talking about that over time increase the yield of your efforts and create sustainable success into the future. Yeah, as our viewers may be aware at Exceptional Connections Networking, we teach the connection circle and the benefits of growing our community into exceptional connectors by following the six steps to exceptional connecting. So Cindy, would you please review the six steps to exceptional connecting 
as a foundation for our business today? Of course, of course. So this is something I'm very excited about. Um, the six steps of exceptional connecting are essentially you're cultivating your connections by discovering, listening, contributing, following up, and we always teach, don't, you know, don't forget, remember to nurture your network and enrich your relationships in your life. Yeah, what a powerful process you've developed. Would you now bridge the connection between the six steps to exceptional connect, connections and the six seasons of your garden? Okay, so I believe, as you mentioned, there are six seasons to creating a successful garden as well as becoming a success, successful networker. Say that six times, right? <laughs> when you become proficient at these six seasons, you're considered a master gardener, right? So in networking, when you follow these six seasons and master the six steps on the connection circle, you are considered an exceptional connector. Yeah. So Cindy, could you give us an overview of your six seasons to creating a successful garden, as well as your analogy to become an exceptional networker before we dig into our talk today? Pun intended there. <laughs> All right. So I've discovered that there's a cyclical process to gardening as well as networking. And it's echoed in the connection circle, as we showed you a few minutes ago, as well as the lessons gleaned from my garden circle. So you move through the process and then you cycle through again. So, you know, again, gardening like networking is truly a garden, <laughs> excuse me, a, it's a journey. Yeah. Um, so the six steps, all right. So first you plan, then you prepare. And again, I want our listeners are, you know, to be able to um, envision both circles kind of sitting on top of each other and also to envision that all we're t although we're talking about the garden and the six steps to creating a successful garden, we're also talking about the six steps to becoming, you know, building um, successful and vibrant relationships as well. So in networking as in gardening, you're planning, then you're preparing, then you're planting, next you're pruning, you pick, or harvest, and then you prosper. And we're going to be talking about each of these individually, but um, this process is, again, cyclical. Yeah, so it's an interesting analogy between the garden and networking and between the connection circle and the six, se six seasons. So I think that's pretty interesting. So when did you get passionate about gardening? Well, thanks for asking. <laughs> so my humble beginnings as a gardener started when I was a young girl and I actually had potted mustache mugs sitting on my windowsill. Now, I have since given away all my collection of mugs, but I was able to get a hold of this that just kind of this is my token mustache mug. <laughs> yeah. um, but I literally, you know, collected mugs with the little lip guard that they have, you know, and I plant, put my pots or my plants in there. Now I was fortunate enough to have a corner bedroom. So I had two windows. So lots of window sill space and lots of light. And so I would just plant little, little plants along my window and just nurture and care for them. So, um, over the years, I discovered the value of these six seasons um, and how they relate to building sustainable relationships. So essentially by resurrecting half dead plants that my family and friends brought to me, I became known as the plant whisperer. And I revived, you know, the revived plants brought me and others joy and happiness and, you know, for people who thought the situation was hopeless. So did, um, are these mustache cups, well, that's, was that a fad or was it important to do it or was it just a whim? 
that at the time to use these because I don't think I've ever seen a lot of mustache cups in my life. <laughs> Oh, I had a lot of them. And you know what? I must have at some point when raising my children, given them away because I can't find one there. I'm there. I may have one in my, my garage, but, um, you know, it was just, I don't know my, it was something my, I, I liked, uh, MGTDs and TCs, those old vintage cars. And a lot of the mustache mugs would have those on them. So maybe that's what attracted me to them. I certainly didn't have a mustache. That wasn't the reason my dad didn't have a mustache. Um, so it was just kind of a fun thing that I did. And I remember my cousin and I, you know, at one point we were both collecting them and would give them as gifts to each other. Um, I don't think it was a teenage girl thing necessarily, but it was something I enjoyed. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Interesting. A little unusual, but kind of unique. Yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. so, so have you always had a green thumb? Were you born with the green thumb? Uh. No, <laughs> I don't have a green thumb, but, um, you know, really I found it's more about being observant, right? It's about caring. It's about paying attention and developing skills over time that, you know, you can be able to put to use for yourself and your garden and your business. And, you know, so really it's, I, I find it's just more about like, I look at my plants and I go, Ooh, you need watering. Cause they're talking to me, right? They're telling me, you know, they're a little limp. Um, so I just, you know, again, try to use those same skill sets and transfer them over. That's where I've got these epiphanies for networking because we need to take care of our network and nurture it. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Cause I, I've heard people go out to their gardens and, talk to the plants. So that's interesting. So yeah, you, I, I, yeah. I, I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that you are. I resemble that, that comment. <laughs> so you identify that there are six seasons to becoming a successful gardener and networker. Could you take us through the process, what we need to be thinking about? Oh, sure. I'd love to. So again, if you're envisioning that image that I showed you, you know, a little while ago about the six seasons for, um, for gardening. The first one is when you plan. So this is when you envision, you dream, you forecast the vision of what you want to accomplish in your garden, as well as what your upcoming networking season is going to look like. So, so, um, so what does the planning process, what does it look like? You know, what are you thinking about? What are you doing? What are you accomplishing when you're thinking about planning? I've got some technical issues here I'm dealing with. Just a sec. So it's not a perfect science. Um, you know, even after researching, again, it's really about learning as you go and being observant. So I love my garden. I love to plant things um, that produce vegetables, herbs. I mean, there's nothing like going out in your garden um, with a little colander or a bowl and you know, being able to harvest your lettuce and then come in the house or pick your strawberries, that's what we're doing right now, and come in the house and create something and then be able to eat it. There's just something very satisfying about that. So I enjoy planting seeds, watching them grow. So they're, you know, they become full fledged sources of energy and sustenance. And frankly, during my journey, uh, my garden journey, I've learned a lot about the power of companion planting. So in other words, I knew you were, you were going to ask me what, why, right? right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is that? It's what, is what that? grows best with what? That's complaining. That's just companion planting in a nutshell. So it really fascinates me when basil is planted next to tomatoes and each one grows stronger and more robust than if they're planted separately and individually. And when rosemary, I should sing a song here. Uh, ro uh, let's see. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. So yeah, yeah. when rosemary, thyme, oregano, sage, so those kind of like barbecue herbs, 
um, when they're planted together, they thrive. Um, so for the, those of you who are listening, a little tip is anything that goes in a salad can be planted together for the most part. Oh, so kind of why is that and how does it relate to networking when people go out and network? So how does this co companion planting, uh, important in that process? That's a great question. Um, it's because because of the relationship between the plants. So they're symbiotic. Um, the plants are mutually beneficial. Th those, the plants that are being grown together, um, they're mutually beneficial when, they're, when they hang out with each other, if you will. Um, they attract friendly bugs and they, they tend to ward off the un unfriendly insects. So just a quick illustration. So if I planted, um, tomatoes next to my, or to, tomatoes next to potatoes, you might get some blight going on or some rot going on. Um, if you, tomatoes next to squash, the squash would encroach on the tomatoes and also tend to bring squash bugs along. So you just wanna keep things together that are gonna be, there's more harmony. So basically then, it's about creating harmony in your networking. Exactly. You got it. Um, so, you know, the question you want to be able to kind of look at in networking is, you know, I'm going to throw this back at you, you Chuck. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know, one great, one, one great question deserves another. So who grows with you? This is a rhetorical question. Hmm. Who are your advocates? Who loves what you do, regardless of what it is, right? Those are your raving fans. So just like certain plants flourish when they're planted together, the same is true with relationships. Essentially, our connections should also be synergistic. So being supportive could be as simple as, you know, writing a thank you note to those who refer you. Um, sometimes it's not obvious who the referee is, so, you know, or how you found out about that new client. Um, so it's important to ask questions and find out and then find, you know, find ways to surprise that, that person, that re referee with a written note, handwritten note, written note, um, a card, a gift, something to show your appreciation and thank them for their faith in you. So here's so the. Not, so it's not all about taking and it, it's about giving. Yes, it's well, it's a cycle, just like the circle. You know, it's give and take. It's like you know, give and take. It's just they're the other side of the coin. Um, so here's the other piece of it. We talked about companion planning and how everybody's all happy, right? Happy plants. <laughs> you know, Harmony. so certain people and. The reality, though, is it's not always, you know, ideal, you know, that idyllic. So there's times when certain plants, as I mentioned, like tomatoes and potatoes or tomatoes and squash or whatever, um, they don't interact well with, with each other. They don't get along. Um, the roots of one plant can take up the nutrients from another in a, in a negative way as opposed to, you know, complementary. So good gardeners manage their plantings to mitigate disharmony and to support flowering and highlight their beauty. Um, well, just like that, we need to be able to manage our friendships, manage our relationships. So certain connections may not get along with each other. So consider having separate events for different types of people, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you know, group friendships together so that there's, you know, there isn't discord. So there's harmony again and, you know, supportive uh, environments to bring out the best in everybody. So, so it's about then um, developing knowing, liking, and trust yep. in, in the process. So yep. people, we know that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So it's a discovery process. Yeah, right? that's, that's, that's actually brilliant. That's a great way to say it because, you know, the, 
in the garden and in networking, it's all about the know, like, and trust. And, you know, plants in their own way have to be comfortable. If they're not, they're, they're stressed. And a stressed plant doesn't produce. Oh, good point. Good point. So we're now to the point where we are, people are knowing us, liking, and trusting us. Right. So, and, and the reverse is true as well. So what, what would be the next step? So, okay, we've planned, right, in the, in the six-step season process. We planned, and now it's time to prepare. So this is time to really prepare the good soil. By doing so, you create the foundation for future yeah. success. So this is the time, I actually love this time, is when you're gathering your resources, your tools, your, you know, I'm purchasing seeds. Yay, seeds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Gets me excited. Um, your plants, your equipment. Um, so essentially digging in the dirt is more challenging and less fun if you don't have the right tools. So this helps me to feel more efficient and as well as being more productive. So likewise, you know, before you can begin cultivating your network, you need the right tools, right? Um, Plan when, you know, you need to plan where you want to plant your seeds for networking, right? Um, so good gardeners prepare their garden beds before planting if they want their vegetables and, you know, you know, different plants to be able to survive and thrive. So probably around January or February is when I'm going out there and I'm getting some, you know, chicken pellets, fertilizer, you know, putting that on my, my, um, my squash mounds, and then I cover it with new dirt, organic, you know, soil to amend it. And then I just kind of leave it alone and let the rain come, let it percolate. Otherwise, my fertilizer is too hot and will actually scorch my, the roots of my plant. So I do that ahead of time. That's, that's what I'm doing to prepare. Um, so with networking, you should also handpick the friendships you want to foster. So friendships require different levels of care. So some friendships need more communication while others very little. And then when it comes to networking tools, you know, you really don't need the latest and greatest to experience success. So in the, these days of COVID, now that we're transitioning from live events to online events, you know, you need a, a, a computer that has some good speed on it, right? Um, good internet connection and maybe even a, let me grab it here, a smartphone, right? Um, that will allow you to have greater ease and versatility, you know, the tools that you need to be able to, you know, to run your business and be able to connect with people. Um, so in order to maximize the number and quality of connections, you envision making, it's really important to prepare for live events as well. Um, old school. <laughs> um, so this is where you, you know, and I, when I go to networking events, I write down my goals. What do I want to accomplish for that meeting? Who do I want to meet? What people do I need to connect with in advance to kind of start, you know, kind of seasoning that opportunity? Um, what outfit am I going to wear? Um, so all of those are, you know, all things that you would do to prepare for gardening as well as in networking. Yeah. So then you need to be looking good, looking your best, right? Yes. Got your business <laughs> card good. with you. Got your business cards. Yes. And you've got your little presentation, your 15, 20, 30 second presentation to right. create curiosity about yourself from yes. the people you meet, when you, especially in person, right? Exactly. When you're in person meetings. So you create yeah. the curiosity so people will ask you to tell me more. Right. So a lot of your success is in the preparation. It's in the planning. It's in the preparation. Okay. So, so now we've kind of created this foundation to move forward, not only in the garden, but in networking. So we, now we have the right equipment. We've got the right thought process, the right mindset. What would you, what would you do next? What would be the next step? The next step is glorious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
The next step is looking at your farmer's almanac and finding out what zone you're in and when you can plant safely after the frost, right? So it's time to plant, it's time to implement, it's time to focus, it's time to take action and sow seeds for an abundant future. So plants need water, they need you know, soil, they need sun, they need fertilizer. There's certain things that they need to stay healthy. So in the same way, relationships, friendships, need communication and support. Okay. You know, and you know, both gardening and networking also require continuous work. You know, work that's frankly very gratifying. You know, they're, they're both gratifying endeavors. Um, you know, I, just in this time of COVID, I'm hearing a lot about how, in, how people are realizing how important connect, being in connection with another human being is. And how there's a lot of people that, you know, they live alone, they're not married, their spouse passed, you know, what have you, the children are grown. And there's, there's a lot of isolation. So community is important. Um, so I'm gonna go back to, I got digressed a little bit there, but it's important to fortify your soil before you reap a bountiful harvest. And that's part of planting, you know, fortifying the soil. Some of it you do during the preparation stage, um, but this helps to establish a strong root system that's so critical to building a foundation for a plentiful yield. So this principle also applies beautifully to networking. So building strong, deeper relationships is the foundational equivalent to, you know, abundant relationships. Hey, that's very insightful. Uh, I appreciate that, Cindy. Building stronger, deeper relationships is the key to abundant relationships and good connections and fostering success in the future. Yes, and as uh, Chuck, Ox Chuck E. Oxford, CEO, <laughs> business consultant, and your tagline being, you know, I help people, you help your clients tap into the genius. You're, you know, I'm going to say thank you for tapping into my genius. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's our little joke there. Um, so meaningful networking online and offline <clears throat> facilitates growth through new connections as <clears throat> well as nurturing existing connections, right? Yes. So now it's time for us to move along the different seasons to pruning. So pruning is the fourth season and it's the season where we eliminate, streamline, clean up and weed out anything that will divert focus from positive growth. So frankly, I found that consistently nurturing and tending my garden will inevitably increase the quality and the quantity of my yield. And weeding is an important part of that to make sure that the yield is there. So, so it appears that being focused on pruning is really very important and key to the whole process. So how does this relate to improving the quality of the networking? Well, that's a really good question. Um, so again, I'm just gonna, before I move forward, I just wanna, you know, again, go back to the, the visual of you, you know, you plan, you prepare, you plant, and I'll, it's not a checklist. It's, you know, again, it's a cyclical process that goes, you know, over and over again. So, you know, as soon as I start, as I plant my garden, I'm pruning immediately. I'm out there right now and I just, my garden just got in, you know, mid-May. It's starting to really take off right now. And um, I'm pruning immediately. So by continually following up and nurturing your network, you can, you know, also significantly increase the number and quality and quantity of connections that you have in your network as well. Um, you know, it takes time to take inventory of your relationships, but it frankly is time well spent. Just like every, every morning I go out in my garden and I just kind of survey it, check it out, 
you know, who's growing, who needs a little pruning, which, which, who, what needs to be caged because the rabbits got to them, even though they say rabbits don't like parsley, my bunny is like parsley and they kind of, there's little sticks now. So I have to cage my parsley. So, you know, you're always kind of surveying what's going on, what needs to be tended to. Um, and the same thing with your network. Um, you know, it's really important to have a, like a, it requires tenacity and ruthless com commitment when you're talking about your network to cut off or cut back what is no longer serving you to achieve more fr fruitful growth. So I'm saying that very kindly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Right, consider what you need to weed out of your life or who. Um, the pruning potential takes into consideration what's possible because I love this, a weeded garden is a healthy garden. A weeded network is a healthy network. So I guess it's important really to be kind of brutal about this and not be fair weathered about it, that you have to really get in there and kind of weed things out, prune things out, so that you have a vibrant network, just like you would have a vibrant garden. So this is yeah. a really good point. So it's important to take into account who we're spending time with and how we're spending our time. That's so true, yep. So, you know, they say, uh, we are the sum total of the five people we spend the most time with. And so that's yeah. illustrative of that. You want to surround yourself with like-minded people. You want to surround yourself with positivity. You want to surround yourself with people who are up to what you're up to, um, right. to be able to get to that level. So, um, so now it's time to move um, to where you can, you know, the season I enjoy the most, where I can really enjoy the fruits of my labor um, so drum roll, please. So this is the season of picking, picking. Okay. So pick is really harvesting your crops, harvesting, you know, enjoying the bounty of this season, you know, all the hard work, all the planning and preparing and planting and pruning, you know, you're still, I'm, I'm still pruning during the picking season. And sometimes I'm still planting. You know, I may pick something and the, that lettuce has bolted, so I'm planting more lettuce. So it's a continuous process. Again, that's why I made it cyclical. It's not check, next, check. It's really cyclical. I'm moving around the circle at different times. Um, so picking, here's the thing about picking. This is where I use my powers of discernment and frankly, patience to determine what is ready to be harvested you know, it's like perfect squash and it's a, not too big, not too small. And, you know, and also that I'm like can use it or can give it away. You know, I'm in that place. If I have a lot, I might let it sit a lot sitting on my, <laughs> my dining room table in trays. Um, I may let it sit there longer. Um, so it's about being discerning and, and knowing what to leave on the vine and what to pick or harvest. And it, it also offers us opportunity to be generous, as I mentioned, and to share the spoils of our labor and, you know, again, joy and happiness, right? To be able to be a conduit for that. So it's really important to be able to give relationships time to mature. And I'm going to say it this way, build trust, right? Mm -hmm. Time to marinate. Um, we want to differentiate that from, you know, basically when it's appropriate to like reap the benefits of what you've sown in relationships or when it's time to deflect yet maintain rapport. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can look at this. You could look at it as, you know, withdrawals and deposits to relationships, or you and I have talked about like a bucket with, you know, water droplets in it, you know, those, those Water droplets are, are basically deposits or contributions to that bucket or that relationship. If there's a hole in that bucket, it's leaking out, you know. So there's, I love all those different analogies, but the gardening one to me 
is really compelling um, in terms of picking because you want to be able to surround yourself with the right people. And sometimes you need to just back off a little bit. Sometimes you need, um, you know, some people meet, need more communication than others. You need to honor where people are um, and how they want to be communicated with. <laughs> you know, nowadays it's some people like being called, some people don't, you know, you, you got to text them before you call them, right? Or you have to e email them to schedule an appointment to text them to call them. I mean, it just, you just got to kind of pay attention. Um, so, so it does sound like it's very important to be consistent and be vigilant about yeah. what you're doing and how, and how you're impacting. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Because not everybody, I mean, if you think of it in times, the right, it's the right time to take advantage of their services or, or products um, of a networking colleague. And I'm always really careful because I don't want to alienate anybody because I want, I want to know, I want to preserve the relationship for future opportunities. Right. So there may be a product or service that they have um, that I'm, it, I don't need it. I have back stock, uh, you know, but at a future date I may, or I want to preserve that relationship because I like them and I want to support them. Um, perhaps it's giving referrals, perhaps it's having them be a part of our community, um, giving them more visibility, but yes, absolutely. I, I think it's important to be able to, to, you know, really bring to life those meaningful relationships. Yeah, well, these are, these are great insights into how gardening and networking correlate. Right. So moving through the seasons of planning, preparing, planting, pruning, and picking has brought you to a place of bringing life to meaningful relationships. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Okay. Exactly. That's the premise. Um, so you know, meaningful relationships are the fruit of, you know, a garden, any garden or any type of a, you know, just a network, um, relationships, friendships, um, you know, it's the realization of your efforts in being faithful, like you said, being consistent. Um, so that leads us to the last season of my six seasons, Lessons Gleaned from the Garden. Um, <clears throat> so this is the season of prosper. So prospering is the fulfillment, excuse me, <clears throat> of all your hard work. So this is again, the realization of your vision. <clears throat> so it, it's a time to take, I love the end of the season as well, because it's a time to kind of pause and reflect and just really enjoy enjoy the fruits of your labor because the hard work has been done. Um, <clears throat> the hard work at the time of prospering is, you know, bringing in the harvest and dealing with it. So whether it's dehydrating or canning or making, you know, pesto out of my basil, um, you know, making sauces out of my tomatoes, and then again, distributing, you know, the the bounty to, for others to share. So the garden is definitely my happy place. <laughs> yeah, it sure sounds like it. So <laughs> it's really, it's, it's really been great that you've taken us on your journey uh, through your garden and through the networking process. I really appreciate it. it kind of brings things, kind of grounding things in, in these uh, activities. So thank you for sharing lessons gleaned from your garden. So now that we have followed you on this journey today to your happy place, would you share with our viewers some parting words of wisdom or some insights that might help wrap this up a little bit for people? Sure, and I think I'm going to also share another picture, if that's okay. Sure. Let's see if I got this set up right here. Okay. There we go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. It looks great. 
This is my relationship garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's when the two gardens come together, right? My, my physical garden where I get to play and enjoy the fruits of my bounty, you know, bounty, what is it? Bounty of my, my uh, harvest. And then also bring amazing friends together. So last year I hosted eight garden parties. And I'm hoping to be able to do that this summer as well. Um, we might have to wear masks, but nonetheless, we'll still gather, right? Um, so, so these helped you use your garden to help connect people, yes. build relationships. Yes. And, and I'm just going to mention this before we close. Um, my intention last year, it was kind of a, I, you know, there wasn't a lot of planning involved. I just, I thought I started having this, Basically, while I'm on my knees digging in the dirt, I was given these six steps. So I was given, first you plan, then you prepare, then you plant, then you prune, then you, uh, what is the prune, pick, and then you prosper. And I wasn't given all six at once. I think I had five of them and I was trying to figure out what to do with harvest. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to keep that, that P kind of, um, you know, analogy going, but you know, it, I did start seeing that. And I, I thought, you know, this is a place to bring people without an agenda. So going back to our connection circle. So at Exceptional Connections and networking group that I founded 11 years ago in August, and Chuck is, um, you know, a critical part, um, important member of our community and has uh, supported me uh, the last number of years and really taking it to the next level. And I so appreciate your friendship and support, Chuck. And so I started seeing the, you know, the, the crossover of connecting, you know, deeply connecting with people, finding out what they're up to, discovering what's, you know, what's important to them, what they're, what they're doing, um, and listening, the power of listening. Um, and once you contribute, discover, and listen, then you can, you've earned the right to be able to contribute to them and to be able to offer suggestions or referrals, um, you know, without an agenda and to be able to follow up, to be able to continue to, you know, keep that relationship alive and then nurture your networks. So again, I, I started seeing both the connection circle, which teaches the six steps to exceptional connecting and then the six seasons. Um, yeah really a synergistic and and so then having people into my garden without an agenda just because and now that i think about it i did do companion friendships if you will you know putting like-minded people together um but i had different groups of of um my networking community and friends come and enjoy my munching garden where they can grab a cherry tomato and grab a sweet pea and have a piece of kale or lettuce and, um, you know, just be able to enjoy themselves. And then we can also get to know each other at a, you know, a deeper level. Um, and some people commented that it was, it was very refreshing. So I'm, I'm planning on continuing that. So it's kind of a little like melding your garden, nature and humanity right? Yes. A, pace of, a pa place of peace. Yes. And we need that more than ever right now. More than ever, we need to create those environments where people feel safe, where people can be themselves, where, you know, there's, you could just see on the faces of the, you know, friends that were at this particular garden party. I mean, there's just this joy in being in nature and being able to celebrate it. And um, so, yeah, it's just been a blessing to me. And, um, you know, so in closing, it's important to nurture your relationships like you tend a garden. Um, take action to cultivate your relationship garden. Um, that's my coined phrase lately is relationship garden. So we have our my physical garden and then my relationship garden. So just like you start off with the harvest, you start with seeds. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I'm gonna say that again. Just like you 
do not start with a harvest, right? You end with a harvest. Right. You start with seeds. Um, you don't start with great relationships, right? You end up with them. You develop them. You, you sow seeds into them. You sow yourself. You water them. You nurture them. You tend those relationships. So the investment of time, effort, and consistency allows us to reap the rewards of being an exceptional connector. So my parting words are look after your network. Remember that you are supported. You just need to reach out sometimes. A strong network is the sum of many, many, many different parts. And just like a garden, your network re requires consistent attention. Got to pay attention to that network. Can't just, you know, plant it and leave it. So give it the right environment, warmth, love, and it will flourish and bear fruit. And don't forget to sow lots of seeds. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Sydney, for, for taking us on your journey today. And what an innovative, fresh idea about bringing people into your garden. Garden. I just bet not many people have had networking events like this. <laughs> uh, it's really innovative and it's really supportive of people just on humanity level. You know, mm. no agenda. Let's just, let's just connect. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank, thank you so much for the journey today and for being here and being such a wonderful connector over the many years. Oh, you're welcome. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's a pleasure. And it was fun to be able to feed people from my garden, pick the lettuce and make the salads for everybody. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to do that this year as well. So I just have a few more pictures. <clears throat> this is, these are um, kind of the, the bounty just before fall. I had some butternut squash, spaghetti squash, and the bees were doing a lot of cross-pollinating, <laughs> as you can see. And uh, anyway, just beautiful, beautiful bounty. And then this was earlier in the season. So this is my summer squash. This is the color they normally are before the bees really started going crazy. And then right now we're looking at strawberries or are our bounty right now. Well, I'm kind of planning in my own mind here, a virtual schedule of being in your neighborhood come harvest time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will need to have you over soon for some salad and the strawberries that are here. And, you know, it'll be a little while before this squash. I saw my first little baby squash, though, and my tomatoes plants I put in last, but they're, they're catching up. So everything's, everything's coming along. I'm very thankful, and I'm actually in the process of expanding my garden. So every year I take on one project to expand it. So... The visual, the picture you saw at the beginning was actually just half my garden. So the other half well, is... it's symbolic too, because we're always trying to cultivate expanding our networks yes. at the same time. So true. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. This was fun. And have a good day. It's been lots of fun. So we can open it up if you want to. Um, we've got a couple of people on the line here that... They may want to enter into our conversation. I'm trying to unmute. I think you're muting yourself. Okay. Hello, Rick Shana. Hi. So this is um, this is really really good. So I have I have uh, I was writing it down as much as you can as I have plan, prepare, plant, pruning picking and prospering and I love I love the beginning and I love the end because I like to see the results of all the work that has been done and I like the beginning because you could kind of visualize the whole process that it's going to take to get to the result so this is was beautiful it was a uh, I didn't even think about how all the things that you've done with uh, you know, the, the, uh, the vegetable, the garden, I didn't even think about connecting it to your net, the networking wheel that we've been working on. I didn't even think about that, but this is beautiful to see 
everything come a full circle, everything I'm learning about the, uh, the networking circle and how it all connects to the garden. So it's so beautiful. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <clears throat> yeah, it's something that's just really been beautiful for me because they're two of my passions that truly have come together. And, um, and I think there's a lot of lessons for us and reminders um, in networking and, and in life. Yeah. It almost wants you to make, make you go out and buy a farm. <laughs> so you have ever expanding garden and networking opportunities, right? I know it does. It 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 does snowball. I notice. Every, I can actually walk in my garden and say, "Okay, that was the year one process. That was year two. That was three. You know, every year there's like, you know, an addition. Um, I would after I do my expansion that I'm doing this year, which is actually kind of doing a. It's not quite doubling, but almost. Um, then I, I've told you, I wanted to do, get some bees. So I'm, I've got a little Mason bee house and then chickens might be in the future. Who knows? <laughs> See, there you go. Ever so it does, it does snowball for sure. Well, it sure makes me feel like having a salad for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Salads are like dessert for us, you know, when you put the blueberries and the strawberries and, you know, the cucumbers and it's just, it's not even, uh, you don't need dessert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful. I any other comments or anything, Roshana? That's, that's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much and what a great job today. It was fun. Thank you for having me. It was fun having the, the table flipped and having you take the lead yeah. hosting the event. You did a great job, Chuck. Yes, you did. Well, thank you. For those of you who are listening, we encourage you to go to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, Exceptional Connections with our um, Conversations to Connect Let's Get Real playlist and subscribe, ring the bell so that you know when the next video drops and Join us every Wednesday from noon to one. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's see.